interesting discussion start or come up in a forum that I was on. And it didn't really start with the classes. What, Man, I can't put my thoughts together. The artisan classes or the profession wasn't the start of the conversation. Uh, what it was was part of it. So I was sharing ideas or thoughts on characters that I had created. You know, because primarily that's what I do on this channel, on my Twitch stream. Um, I do all of that. However, I was in this forum and I just put two of the guys that I had made and kind of like minimal sentences about them. I didn't want to bore people. And somebody commented with one of their ideas for their character. And I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. I like where you're going with it. Well, they had supported the idea of the character with a profession. And I don't know why I never fucking thought about it. And I was like, oh my gosh. Picking a profession for some of these guys and gals that I had created would add another depth, another layer. And then beyond that, I was like, what if you started with the class? The artisan class. Like, what if you started with the profession and worked backwards for a character? What if you did something like that? Well, like, that sounds like that would be really neat. Like, pick a class, an artisan class or a profession in a race and then work yourself backwards into what your primary class would be and then what they would choose is your secondary class and like but make it like a, a profession first character so i thought that would be a really cool thing to do so what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to go through some of these and what i think about them when i'm talking about building a character off of them and then i'm going to make a separate role-playing character video that i usually do character creation but we're going to do that we're going to reverse the method and we're going to start with a with an artisan class or a profession and we're going to work backwards into our character and just kind of see how the flow goes and how that works because we don't usually do that so let's just jump into the classes in general so just a quick overview in case you don't know is there are three artisan classes excuse me they're like your three big buckets your three big trees when it comes to your classes you've got your gathering your processing and your crafting now i don't know if these are all of them they may be but processing seems to have the least amount. So like in this one next, the illustration here is you only see animal husbandry and smelting. And then gathering is gonna be the next one with farming, fishing, herbalism, lumberjacking, mining, and tanning, or I'm sorry, tame, taming. And then crafting's got a load of them. Alchemy, armor smithing, blacksmithing, caravan building, carpentry, cooking, jewel crafting, scribes, shipbuilding, siege weapons, weapon smithing, and, and just a short sidetrack through the enchanting discussion that was happening in Discord and on Twitter, I believe, uh, we found out that um, enchanting's main, the main profession behind enchanting is going to be scribes. Like, you may need other professions to chip in to get the components together, but they're all going to end at scribe who's going to write the enchantment scroll that people can then use. So just a heads up. So the, what I wanted to do here is just how do we go about role playing in these uh, specific professions? Like, how do they impact your character? Uh, and I think it's a really cool way to think about it. So, gathering, to me, most gathering or gatherers are going to have to be somewhat adventurers. Like, you're going to have to go out into the world to find the nodes, uh, to find the materials, the resources to gather. You know, obviously fishing, you know, you got to go find the best places to fish. Herbalism, obviously, all the, you, you can see, like, of those, the most dangerous to me is probably taming, right? Because I'm assuming similar to, like, a Pokemon situation, like, you'll have to damage, potentially, or do a little bit of damage to allow you to then use some kind of taming ability uh, and reach some kind of bar or something that then lets you know that you're taming them and then you tame them. So that might be the most dangerous uh, the highest chance to get killed, I guess. Um, farming may be just the safest of the gathering professions. You may be able just to farm at your freehold. Um, it may be the most time-consuming, who knows, but that might be the safest profession. But when it comes to role-playing, let's leave farmer out of it because that's kind of an anomaly. All these other guys are going to be, to an extent, you're going to have to have like an adventure-esque theme with your gatherer and the reason i say that is like we just said you're gonna have to go out into the land of vera to discover these nodes and then as you become a higher level in these professions or as just the general economy 
and the world and the server develops and the progression of your server gets further ahead and further ahead now people are looking for stronger weapons and rarer potions and more rare uh, goods you're gonna have to go find harder to find uh, maybe limited resources maybe there will be like in WoW they had this like while your top level herb might be this and you can find them in a couple places there's a rare herb that's even harder to find and you only need one or two of those for a potion or a ink or whatever but they're just really hard to find you know so now you're really adventuring and you're really exploring to try to find that rare herb but you're trying to find like a pond at the top of a mountain uh in the ha in a very like aggressive habitat of some some mob to fish a rare fish you know uh so i think you're gonna have to have adventuring as your base on these guys um not that you can't on your other professions but for these in particular if you're like just from a role play perspective if i was building backwards from one of these professions i would immediately be like okay the character i'm making my miner my lumberjacker my uh, herbalist my fisher they're gonna have to be uh adventurers first second that'd be adventurer second uh and then you could have a lot of flavor with like why they like to fish or why they're so focused on herbs and lumberjacking and mining and taming and you know what is it about it that drives the character why you're using that as your focal point um but when in the role playing them in general is like like a miner i think of your coal miners in american history so they're gonna be rough and tough uh blue collar they go to work they don't know if they're coming home you know pretty pretty rough and tough average joe kind of people your tamer feels like they'd be more a little more reckless a little more wild um because like almost like daredevils or thrill seekers like they're hunting down the most dangerous game well that's human but you know what i mean they're hunting down like really dangerous rare animals to then fight with and try to tame um and then if you wanted to play a more morally gray or like i don't want to say evil but not necessarily a goody two shoes you could almost like play like a poacher uh which could be kind of neat uh then your lumberjacks those are going to be just your hearty happy to go out in the mornings spend all day in the woods chopping down trees kind of guys you know most lumberjacks i've met while burly and and grumpy sometimes are usually like relatively in tune no i guess i wouldn't say that i don't know i just in my mind i would i would do this as somebody who likes nature you know because they get to travel in this one the land of vera looking for rare trees uh, while they're chopping down the trees you know they're just still all around nature and everything i don't know that's kind of where i'm at herbalist same deal you know using nature's bounty to then make other people healthy uh or they could be like a crazy drug dealer <laughs> you know like you look like okay they find all these herbs to make these potions that they sell to people and they're kind of like a crack at <laughs> i don't know i just you know fun things you could do with it fishing it would almost be somebody who is adventurous but like a lone wolf uh maybe they they do like to brag with the fish they catch but they like to do things on their own time they like they're quiet they like the sounds of nature they like solitude they like doing things by themselves uh and then farmers are are different you know if they i think they'll stay in their freeholds but they will be more i don't know how to how you would you obviously hard working like any of the gathering professions i'd almost put all of the gathering professions as like blue collar ideas like when you're thinking of a role-playing character i would think that they're blue collar in blue collar adventurer types taming i don't know if i i mean i don't know if i'd put them as blue collar as much as i would as like crazy adventure thrill seekers <laughs> so those could be really cool ways to role play those professions now those are obviously i barely scratched the surface just because i didn't want this video to be stupid long um and we can go into depth on each one of these uh and like i said in the next video when i make a character from this and we kind of work backwards we'll go a little more in depth into what i think but those are just general overviews processing now this one i don't again i don't know if there's only gonna be the two processings uh, so I think that really makes it easier like smelting is going to be somebody who's just working with metal all day similar to a blacksmith so they're going to be like big and maybe big and, and burly because they got to be hardy to be in that heat all day um, dirty all the time another blue collar well animal husbandry gives me more of like a like a hippie hippie's a bad word but you know like more free love and money love and money love and uh monsters and you know love and beast animals 
I don't know, I'm getting a Hey You Cool Cats and Kittens vibe. <laughs> I will never financially recover. I'm getting kind of those vibes from Animal Husbandry. It doesn't have to be. Again, you could take it the like poacher um, selling rare exotic things that shouldn't be sold for money route. Uh, but I feel like Animal Husbandry could go more of like the your typical like druid route. Um, ranger vibes. Because these are going to be like farmers. They're going to be stuck at their ranch. Like cowboy vibes. Maybe even that's a cool way to do it. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say these are adventuring first or even secondary. Similar or how the uh, how we said that the other classes would be. What am I trying to say? The gathering professions. These guys kind of chill. You know, they're the middleman. Somebody brings a rare ore. The smelting guys buy it. They turn it into good metals and pure metals and things like that. And then they sell them to the crafters. Animal husbandry, I think, are the ones that actually turn the tamed beast into mounts. Uh, which are going to be huge. Especially since there's only very few flying mounts. So the land mounts will be something everybody has a lot of or is going to want cool ones of. Especially if there's a way to get some with different abilities or perks. Um, whether it be jumping or gliding. Or maybe... Uh, versions that do better in PvP, like a large-scale PvP. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. But from a role-playing perspective, not adventuring, more home bodies, things like that. Hi, no cam today. Oh, yeah, I hid my cam. What? Sorry, I, I went to the restroom and I hid the cam. And now my hair's all crazy. Uh, and then crafting. So the crafting classes are different, you know, when I think crafting, I think artisan, I think artist in some of these, like, scribe and, and jewel crafting, I feel would be more like, uh, snob, I don't want to say snob, yeah, snobby, like upper crusty, uh, rich, you know, scribey maybe the same, but a little more intellectual. Um, same with alchemy, like mad scientist to me, uh, scientific, kind of crazy, armorsmithing, blacksmithing, carpentry gives me more of the like uh, worn you know calloused hands hard worker been at it for years the family's done it um then we go into shipbuilding and siege weapons which i think are going to be wildly important but i think under underutilized or under selected by players because shipbuilding might become more popular because naval combat is so rare in mmorpgs so shipbuilding could be really cool, especially if they, uh, depending on the quality of the ship, it would have more health or armor or attack. And they talked about there being um, nodes on islands, there being bosses in the seas, mobs in the seas, world bosses in the in the ocean. So you're going to have like naval combat situations with world bosses. So I think shipbuilding will come out and be pretty popular. But I still think every server is only going to have a handful of shipbuilders that are like mastered. Because I think a lot of people are going to be really focused on uh, blacksmithing, armors, weapons. Um, and then your PvP guys may actually be focused on siege weapons. Pirates. Yeah, I think a lot of people play uh, really enjoy the pirate aesthetic. You know, Sea of Thieves got really popular. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if shipbuildings uh, match it with some people who like have fun playing like a pirate vibe or role playing a pirate vibe. <coughs> or trying to hijack merchant ships could be fun uh, but shipbuilding will be in that I'd be interested to see what siege weapons are are they just going to be things that maybe help you break down um, help you break down gates more is it going to be like things that you could latch onto castle walls <coughs> man that's something stuck in my throat you can latch onto castle walls and Go up like a ladder. You know, if it's like that where you could hook on and then climb up to a ladder to break through the walls sooner, will they just be like trebuchets to do extra damage or catapults or ballistas? You know, what are they going to be? Now, depending on the server and depending on how huge the node versus node combat or the castle sieges or trying to take down a metropolis, like how popular those get on the server will depend on how I think how supported your siege weapon makers are. And when it comes to like role playing a siege weapon maker, I think you, you kind of go the alchemy route. 
uh, kind of like a mad scientist, but you're an engineer, so like a mad engineer, like like a, a crazed goblin or, or a dwarf uh, is kind of what I'm thinking of, or a gnome-esque. Um, yeah, for sure. It's kind of Lord of the Rings. Like, that's kind of what I'm thinking about, like that and other show and other movies and books uh, that have large-scale sieges in them, you know, when it comes to what the siege weapon is or how to use them. So it'll be really interesting because at the same time, I don't know if you can use siege weapons in monster coin events or the monster coin uh, monsters take the place of siege weapons in those sieges. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it could be a lot of fun. Can you imagine doing like a large scale PVP and they have just a really good siege weapon group and they make really badass siege weapons that then you just overrun the enemy. And then if they're balanced, then it's all about strategy and tactics. So I think siege weapons could be a lot of fun as a profession not to mention just as like a role-playing profession if you're role-playing a character who's a siege weapon creator you know why do they want to see mass destruction or why do they want to be able to take down entire armies or take down the walls of a castle like what's their backstory why is that or are they just impressed by the sheer size and mass of creating these things so that could be a lot of fun uh from a role-playing perspective you know we don't have to go into all of this when it pertains to role-playing but Caravan building is another one. I think caravan building is going to be more of a role play from like a merchant perspective. Because uh, if you have a, like if you're making a merchant type character or if you're going to have one character that focuses on trading and maybe you're in an economic node and all of these deals, we know that caravans are going to be a big part of keeping the global economy moving. So if you are a merchant focused character, perhaps your profession is caravan building because you can build stronger caravans that can take more hits. Maybe they move faster. And then there's a, there's a mercenary system of hiring mercenaries to protect your caravan. So hiring better mercenaries and building better caravans and then selling caravans to other people trying to transport goods or whether they're guilds or social, social uh, organizations or what have you. That could be a really fun way to role play caravan building. And I wonder if these two will kind of feed off of each other, you know, because you're going to need better quality wood and better quality parts to put together the caravan. And the carpenter might need to make them. Now, I think they said you could master one or two professions. Like, you'll only be able to go really deep into one of the three buckets. So, gathering, processing, or crafting. And then once you go into those buckets, you can only master, like, a couple of the ones in there. So, I would probably, if you wanted to do caravan building, you would do both of these together. Um, like, if I'm going to do cooking, I'll probably do cooking and alchemy. Um on the off chance that between the two of them I can come up with beer. <laughs> or, you know, selling potions at, alongside a chicken dinner at your tavern. Uh, so I think it's just the, the crafting professions, processing, all the different professions that they have. I think a lot of those are just going to give way to some really cool character designs, uh, character builds just for regular playing of the game, and then role playing in general. It'll be really fun with how important the player run economy is and how much they're putting emphasis on the player run economy with like world economies with the environment and the changing seasons affecting the economy uh, access to certain resources they're kind of creating uh, an environment where all of them actually are needed and not just for one thing you know it seems like in a lot of games when it comes down to the end game your professions are only needed for very specific things at the very end like oh I really need this buff that can be made by a potion Oh, I really only need this one meal that's made by cooking. So you max your cooking out real quick. You make a bunch of these meals. You're good to go. So I think making the professions relevant in the game from beginning to end is a big deal. Having systems that support them and creating your entire economy and construction of player economy around the professions gives them so much weight that then being a role player and role playing one of these professions you can still have like a really lucrative time in game and not feel like you're falling behind in the resource category uh so i think that the support and the thought that intrepid studios is putting behind their professions uh the importance of them the impact they have on the player economy and the world i think is going to make um role playing these professions uh a big deal and that's not even getting into just using these professions as additional flavor to characters that you've already thought about that you want to play or characters that we've already created. We could go back and look at, I don't know, we've made like 15 characters. We could pick one of them uh, and throw a profession in there and add an additional additional layer of depth to them. 
So the profession system seems really well thought out. Uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. I think they said it will. most of the professions will be in Alpha 2, so it'll be really cool to see those, uh, see how they have impact. And then just the way they'll support role-playing and the way role-playing can support them, uh, especially if you can create not just useful items that affect the progression of the game and people's adventuring and their character, but if you can make, like, aesthetic pieces, uh, pieces for people's freeholds, pe pieces that are, like, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, maybe they don't give stats, but it's like, oh, I made this really cool black blade, you know, or something like that. Or maybe you can create skins uh, for people's weapons, or I don't know. It just lends itself to supporting the role-playing community and then role-playing uh, supporting all these professions could be a really cool dynamic and I'm pretty excited for the professions in general. I've always liked professions as like a way to play your character and interact with the game and like I said probably five times already in this video they are going to have a huge impact on the economy and the world and I'm really excited for it. So that's my thoughts on role playing and uh, role playing with the professions and how the professions will impact it and, and things you can think about. Obviously not all of the ways I thought, not all of the things that ran through my head, but kind of the surface level. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, maybe what your favorite profession is or how you might uh, role play a profession or, or what do you think about, like what's the first kind of character that pops in your head when you think about alchemy or taming or shipbuilding, you know? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And thanks for checking it out.